Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Jackknife TV. If you can do me a quick favor, you can go over and uh, smash the subscribe button and hammer down a like for me. Uh, it really helps the channel out, uh, helps me grow, and continue to you know give you some decent content. I know I haven't been around for a while, like the last about the last week or so. I wasn't really doing anything that interesting. Mostly just uh, honey do lists, some some house projects. Uh, babysitting, you know, babysitting duty. My wife's been on vacation, you could per se. Uh, she went down to uh, Disney World uh, to with the, let's see, the the grandmother, the great-grandmother, um, my one daughter and her and her niece. Um, so it's been, uh, you know, it's been kind of chaotic for me. I'm not, you know, I'm basically pulling double duty here, trying to trying to do, you know, the, the honey-do list and the chores and everything, you know, and still, you know, juggle being a dad and, and being a mom at the same time so hey you know it's been kind of busy so i just haven't really made any content and would have been it would have been anything really spectacular like i put out like a little six minute video of me uh pretty much sanding down our banister and staining and everything so uh you know i apologize for that if you've been watching the channel and it's been kind of boring it's all it, you know it haven't really been anything to do with trucking and it's been kind of boring um but today what we're doing uh we're, we're gonna pull the little third car the beater car the Volkswagen here okay get over to the truck here and uh, we're gonna start it up before I have to go uh, in the morning let's see Monday morning I'm gonna probably have to get up at like two o'clock in the morning because I gotta I gotta load out uh, Mount Vernon New York and I want to get out there before the traffic and everything plus it's a it's kind of an early delivery 6 a.m. so I'm uh, I got some of my stuff my clothes and everything in the back we're going to head over to the truck and, uh, you know, fire up and everything, get her ready because she's been sitting there, you know, uh, the whole, what, the whole week and everything. Make sure the batteries are good. Make sure there's no coolant loss. You know, typical stuff. Things that you should do because you know what usually happens, especially when I had the older truck. The truck would sit for a week or two. I'd go on vacation or something, and I'd come back. The batteries would be dead. This was leaking. This started leaking oil, things like that, flat tires and everything. So we're going to be getting out of here right now. And uh, I'm going to head over there. So catch you right back. All right. Here we are. There's Toothless. Pull right up here. And we're going to get out. We're going to fire her up. That's what we're going to do. To, a, to a, uh, 12 and a half volts on here. So, let's see here. She fires right up, I guess, because I probably got the, uh, I got the refrigerator off, I think. Pretty sure I do. Yeah, I turned it off. Yeah, it's turned off. All right, so, start it up. We're gonna go walk around and do, a, you know, like a thorough pre-trip. Make sure I have no flat tires or anything and nothing's leaking. And uh, then I'm going to load my clothes up in here. So let's get out there and do this. but they do. We're just walking around doing our pre-trip. Well, post, post pre-trip. I just got the door at home for that. That came off, uh, I don't know, like a few days ago. I did a tire kick method. I've been so used to kicking tires and feeling when they're low. That that's when I decided to get out the tire gauge. That fifth wheel definitely needs some grease, I'll tell you that. Tire's all good. So obviously I'm not gonna sit here and bore you with a whole entire pre-trip. That'll be on another day. Eventually I'm gonna try to make videos here for, for newer guys, uh, people just coming in here getting their CDL and they're coming into the industry, getting their CDL and everything. Uh, and, uh, you know, like like proper pre-trips. Like, like technically, to be honest with you, really what, what DOT really wants is for us to have a creeper and 
and get under here and touch every single nut, bolt, and washer before we basically drive away, which it isn't going to happen, folks. I mean, it, it just isn't going to happen. All right. All right. So real quick question. Now I shut the truck off. What do you guys think about like hubcaps and everything? All right. So I have a, I had a hubcap set sitting around in my um, sitting around in my basement for my let's see my T T800 that I had, and I originally had uh, what are they the five the five pin or the five I don't know no, five spoke hubcaps the ones that sit inside over the hub on this truck and what happened is they rusted the, the lug covers rusted and everything and I ended up putting this on what do you guys think about it I don't know I'm a little iffy about these I don't like how they stick out so far I might be changing them but that's you know I'm just asking for somebody else's opinion on it because I think it's kind of eh, I don't know I kind of don't like it but other than that the back ones are fine you know I like I like them on the back but not the front I don't know I just have a my opinion about them. But yeah but that's that so this is just a pre-trip of the pre-trip that I'm gonna end up having to well to technically tomorrow morning when I fire this baby up for oh for basically a New York City run Mount Vernon Yonkers you know same same thing right over there uh, as far as I was concerned Yonkers and Mount Vernon is New York City so uh, I don't care what you know what the map shows or what anybody says still the same it's basically the same damn place other than that, we're going to, uh, pretty much going to call it quits here today. I just wanted to start her up for a little while, make sure the batteries were good, no tires are flat. You don't need to be out here at 2 o'clock in the morning with, you know, another windy day in, in what, 20 or 25 degree temperatures. Jesus, it's so freaking heavy with the wind blowing on it. I don't know if I can close it. Come on. There we go. Yeah, between the wind, wind coming over here and everything. That was, that was that was pretty uh, pretty hard to actually close that hood, and I'm no uh, I'm no little puny guy either. But all right, so we're gonna see you guys later at like two o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna get out of here and go back I'm home. I'm back. I'm back in the truck. It's uh, 1 a.m. in the morning, and uh, I'm just getting up. Yes, I slept in the truck. Not even more than 15 minutes down from the house, and I will explain to you why I did this. All right, or why I slept in the truck. Let me get some more light in here. Ah, there we go. Now it looks a little bit better. So the reason I slept in the truck is because I have two children and a wife. And, you know, sometimes when you have two younger children, they don't understand that dad has to sleep because he has work tomorrow or, well, tonight, I guess you could say, or at night. And he needs to actually get some sleep so he can drive a truck. So that is why I slept in the semi truck. Uh, do I do it often? Not really. But when I feel that uh, the kids are, you know, a little rambunctious or they have friends over, like my son did. He had, uh, he had his friend over earlier. Uh, it's a good idea for me to sleep in the truck. It just, you know, I want to get that rest in. So what I'm doing is I'm getting up. And uh, we're going to head over to Pottsville and uh, pick up my load. And then I get to head to, like I said, Yonkers, well, uh, Mount Vernon, New York. So let's, uh, let's get ready and get out of here. So uh, what's a little unusual tonight is I just got off uh, the Gordon exit here, uh, which is the High Ridge Park exit also. And um, there's no trucks parked anywhere along the ramps here on uh, I-81, which is uh, very unusual due to the fact that usually when I come through here, there's about 20 or 30 trucks, sometimes depending on the uh, depending on the night, parked out there off the on-ramps and on-ramps, or just on this road right here where, uh, where we just, you know, turned at the light. So... I don't know what's uh, what's going on, but that's, I don't know, I th think that's a little unusual. All right, so we're at Tyson, we're gonna check in and uh, grab this load. Gotta put on the uh, fancy dancy safety vest, it's all knotted up in a ball here. 
Jeez, these things are so junky. There we go. That one still flopped in and out. Whatever. It is, it is. You know what I mean? Looking good tonight, like usual. Let's go up in here and do what we gotta do. Get in and get out. being said usually this ramp here has a boatload of trucks parked on it but tonight looks like there's only these two or three which is a little unusual for a little unusual for a weeknight so I'm guessing uh, maybe loads slowing down a little bit around here yeah, I've noticed lately that fewer and fewer trucks are parked around here so I don't know it's just uh like I said, just an observation. Could be could be anything. But uh, I definitely do know that the market is not doing, you know, any better for most of us out here. Uh rates have come up, like they have gotten better from where they were, but they're nowhere near where they need to be. So that's uh <laughs> that's a catch twenty two there. To be honest with you, because the rates come up again, and we see an influx back into the market, and eventually that demand is going to manifest itself into uh, you know supply and demand issues and everything, and we'll be right back where we are. Uh, well, are no, well, we're we'll be right back where we were. Uh, before this little uptick in the market. And I, I don't see what, I, what I'm starting to wonder is maybe we should basically cool it. Just like cool down, you know, maybe silence ourselves a little bit on YouTube. Uh, maybe not put things out there as much as we have been doing. And I, when, I, when I mean we, I mean the general you know, YouTube as a whole, I guess, the trucking community, because it, it seems to me like what's happening here is us content creators are fueling some of this influx into the market. You know, we're giving our examples and, you know, facts and whatnot of, you know, how profitable trucking can be. Well, the problem is, is it brings an influx of new drivers, an influx of new owner operators. And what ends up happening is the market's flooded and demand for loads skyrockets, which, you know, in turn puts puts the ball in the court of the brokers because the brokers know they can move their loads no matter what, and just about at what price. Um, and it just turns into a free-for-all of, you know, every man for himself 
super race to the bottom. And it seems like it's happened every time since 2018. And I would say the the content creation, you know, pretty much started some around where around 2018 during that last gold rush, if you want to call it that. And it's just continued, and it's it's like fueled the the flame of what's what's going on out here. Now I'm not saying I, I blame every single content creator, but the, uh, you know there are some that are out there that will say fuel the flames more than others, uh, give give unrealistic expectations and and you know put you know puts these notions into new CDL holders. I guess you know new guys coming into industry uh, that that they'll make. You know, as soon as they get their CDL, that they can go into one of these mega carriers, become a lease purchase driver, and start grossing four or five, six thousand dollars, you know, a uh, a week. And the problem is, these guys don't realize that when they initially get into these lease purchase, you know, options, they don't they don't realize that you're not really going to see that five thousand dollars. It's all going to get eaten up in costs and go back to the carrier or, or you know into your tank and fuel. And it's it's just a shame that you know that it's 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 become to this that you know there's actively creators, uh, especially within the you know YouTube trucking um, realm or what what are you genre whatever you want to call it uh, that that don't could care less about the drivers you know their fellow brethren out here on the road and will do anything and everything and say whatever they can. Uh, to fuel, like I said, fuel the fire here, and uh, just profit off of it. You know, either either by views or by you know programs that they're selling, or merchandise or whatnot. And, and like I said, I'm not talking about every single creator, uh, you know, within the trucking YouTube realm here. I'm talking about there's few that I probably don't even know, but I've at least seen, watched or seen one or two of their videos that they, they just they just hustle they hustle guys in and out of this industry and they take advantage of them the same way that you know recruiters do practically uh, they, they whisper sweet nothing into their ears and, or you know onto the camera and these new drivers and sometimes even more seasoned drivers they just laugh it up they just laugh it up and that's like get, it's like to the point okay Ego Logistics, Super Ego, all right? That's how that company has continued to still somehow entice drivers into that hellhole they call a carrier, I guess you want to call it a mega carrier, technically, per se. Uh, just a bunch of smoke and mirrors and lies and, and promises and hopes of, you know, free trucks making, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine grand gross a week. And by the time they get done, you know, they're left with uh, sometimes less pay than a company driver. And somehow they, 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 they just walk these guys along. And, you know, some of it has to be common sense, all right? When you sign on the dotted line and you go to these companies and you think that, you know, they're giving you something for nothing, you know, there, there's a little bit of ignorance, uh, you know, involved in that. And, you know, when, when shit hits the fan, you know, I can't say that necessarily I shed a tear for those guys. I mean, it sucks, but a lot of it's already written out plain as day in English right there on the contract. And let alone the reviews. You go on these Google reviews or on YouTube and you, you know, either read or watch the reviews on these companies. And they're horrific. They're utterly horrific. And yet, guys still line up and keep going. So, I don't know what it is about this industry. Uh, I guess a lot of us interpret it, you know, the brotherhood or whatnot in different ways. Because you'll come on, you'll come on, like, let's say, Facebook or something, or one of these groups. And you'll actually call out some, of, like, nonsense that some of these guys are either writing or, or just, like, let's say, in, inside the truck stop, you know, spewing out at the, uh, uh, iron skillet or whatnot, and you'll call it out, and next thing you know, you're being attacked because 
well, you won, you're, you're supposedly mean. And two, you know, you're, you're not honoring the code, the brotherhood code, where apparently no driver, whether they're brand spanking new or have been in the industry for 100 years, we just wanted to say that, uh, can do any wrong. And, you know, that mentality is, is literally digging our own grave, guys, that mentality where, you know, the brotherhood, uh, we can do no, no wrong at all. It's, it's like, look at it out here. You, you call out some of this stuff, the trash, um, and everything. It's just, you get attacked for it because, you know, you're not honoring the code where, like I said, apparently no driver can do wrong. And the same thing with the, the newer drivers, all right, coming into this industry, God forbid you criticize them. All right, everyone says, you know, you were, they were new once, you know, yada, yada, yada. Well, there's some things that these newer drivers and newer CDL holders are doing that it, it's not it's not that they're having a hard time backing up or anything. It's that they literally have the lack of common sense and, and in my opinion, brain power to even be out here on the road with a, you know, 80,000-pound death machine. And nobody's speaking up because whenever we do, we get attacked for it and, and we lose you know, lose views or whatnot, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, at this point, I'm just tired of it, you know, I'm tired of it not getting called out, uh, I'm tired of guys, you know, hustling people into this industry just so they can get some views, and whisper sweet nothings in their ear that won't matter, that, that, that won't matter once these guys get in and they just get taken advantage of, whether that be on the company side or as an owner-operator, lease purchase driver or whatnot. And guess who's not going to be there to, you know, help them out when, when shit hits the fan? Who's going to pay their, their car payment, their mortgage, you know, their truck note? Who's going to pay that? The guy that initially talked them into this? Well, you know, and then whether that be on YouTube or technically, you know, at a carrier as a recruiter. Because I've noticed a lot of these, a lot of these carriers now, they, they don't necessarily use recruiters. They use drivers. They use drivers now to, like I said, spew their... Uh, propaganda and and you know whisper sweet nothing is nothing in these guys ears and they, they just get hooked they get hooked they think they're gonna make you know five six seven thousand dollars a week and they fail to realize that you know that's just gross profit you gotta take all that money out and the money's not guaranteed either next week you might only do one load something could happen it's it's almost like a losing battle at this point you know, with, with everything in the trucking industry. And I, 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 I hate to say, like, I, I really do. Like, I really want to come out here and have something really good to say. And the only thing I can say is, you know, if you try hard enough, all right, and you suck up as much real knowledge off the right people in this industry, you will make it through this downturn, all right? You know, if you listen to people like DIY Semi and, and, and Cash is King, uh, Snorlord, uh, you know, his uh, update on the market and everything off DAT. Every morning he does it, all right? It's called morning coffee. There is a chance for you to survive this, all right? You, you gotta look through the bullshit. You gotta look through the brand new trucks, the uh, long nose Kenworth and 379 Peeps. You gotta look through that and, you know, just brush that nonsense off your shoulders and basically Concentrate on the things you don't see. Concentrate on, you know, where they're getting the extra profit at, you know, what they're doing, it, or, or uh, I should say what, you know, direct customer or situation they have that you'll never be able to have, you know, to be able to afford those kind of trucks and whatnot and that kind of lifestyle and, you know, to be throwing money around. You, get, you know, it's just, you know, everything is not how it seems, especially in trucking, all right? There's so many smoke and mirrors, it's, it's ridiculous, all right? Like, you initially get hit with it right off the bat after you get your CDL. But that's enough rambling on about that. I probably got about another two hours to go or whatnot um, before I get over here into Mount Vernon and, and deliver. We should be there at about 4.30, which is about... 
It's about three and a half hours, or two and a half hours before my appointment time. So I'm pretty sure they'll take me, which would be absolutely great because I want to get in and out. You know what I mean? In and out. So let's get going down the road. Oh, man. Here we are. The GW Bridge. George Washington Bridge. This is going to be fun. As you can see, I'm a little later than uh, than I wanted to be. Uh, uh, let's see. I, I decided to pull over and take a, about a 45-minute nap. And then I had to go get fuel at the PA there in Columbia off of Route 80. And that's where the fun started. Um, I was pretty much there for about 45 minutes trying to get fuel. Uh, the first, let's see. The first pump I went to... I had to walk in and, uh, let's see, try to purchase fuel, purchase fuel, and uh, come to find out, they shut my fuel card off here because uh, I took a week off. So then I got a hold of dispatch and, well, more than likely didn't get a hold of dispatch, we'll put it that way. Uh, texted them a couple times, no answer, no answer. Then I ended up trying to buy my own fuel, and of course the pump I was at uh, pumped, geez, might have been maybe a gallon an hour. Uh, so then, uh, so then I canceled that transaction and had to back out, and then wait in line between two trucks again to get fuel. Then I get to the pump, and I'm still sitting there waiting to waiting for somebody in dispatch to get a hold of me. Finally, after about 30 minutes, somebody finally gets a hold of me. Then they tell me it's going to be a little bit longer because they can't turn my fuel card on over there. I guess night night shift dispatch. So then they end up, I guess, calling one of the day shift uh, dispatchers, I guess supervisors up, and they finally got a hold of them. I guess they used, you know, the emergency contact or whatever, you know. And... Uh, by that time, I was ready to buy my own fuel again at that pump. But, you know, I'd also lose out on 75 cents off on fuel per gallon. So I was a little irritated by that. And uh, I just I just waited. I didn't care. I was already figuring I was going to be late now. And by the time I got up here to the GW Bridge, or pretty close, uh, it looked like I was gonna it looked like I was gonna be fine getting across the bridge here. Uh, but as you can see, uh, I ended up getting uh, stiffed here. Uh, we're stuck in traffic. I mean, it's not that bad. This is pretty good, actually. This is this is a good day to to uh, be stuck in this traffic. It's not. I don't know. It's just not that bad. Uh, I think a lot of people took off for the eclipse today. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, today is Monday. Uh, what is it, the eighth? And uh, we're apparently having a solar eclipse. And, of course, I forgot my sunglasses at the house. <laughs> so, I guess I won't be looking at it, per se. But, we are going to have an eclipse today, so that should be interesting. Hopefully, nothing cataclysmic happens. Four left lanes. Uh, yes, yes, that is the truck GPS. I do have the truck GPS running. Why, you might ask? Because where I'm going, I've been there plenty of times, but... It is so, how can I put it, um, zigzag, I guess, z you got to zigzag your way through uh, Mount Vernon that I don't trust myself and I don't want to have any surprises, so the truck GPS is on right now for me, uh, because there's about three or four low bridges over there that I don't need to accidentally veer off the road, because the road's really goofy there in Mount Vernon, the road I gotta take to get to this place, and I don't feel like veering off onto the wrong road and then having to back down it because I can't sit underneath the bridge. Oh. There we go. No stopping on the bridge or an eclipse. Come on, I sure hope nobody's gonna do that. <laughs> That's sad they had to put that out there. The one thing I do have to say, though, as long as, if there was no traffic, or I was a pedestrian walking across this bridge, there sure is a nice view of the Hudson River in, in New York City. Like, 
You would never think it was the. I don't know. I don't want to say it's a, you know, trash hole or anything. But to be honest, you know, the few times that I have been to New York City and, you know, t to uh, Times Square and all that, um, it, it pretty much the whole city smells like sour milk. Sour milk and trash, rodents running around. At one time, though, it had. It had its heyday. Yep, yeah, just uh, just cut me off, and then and then hit your brakes, and then cut the uh, cut the T six hundred off too next to me. Your typical dump truck driver right there. That's why you always see them rolled over or smashed into or you know, smashed behind into a car or something or into a jersey barrier. Well, I shouldn't say your typical dump truck driver. Your typical dump truck driver for New Jersey or New York, I'll tell you that. I ninety five north, then exit right. I learned a long time ago trying to haste, you know if you want to call it that, trying to, you know, jam your way in and speed around here. Pretty much all you end up doing is beating the crap out of your truck and uh, aggravating yourself. And then, of all, you know, of everything else, uh, you just put yourself at more risk of getting in an accident, trying to drive like Mario Andretti through here. Alright, so we're probably going to sit in some traffic here for a little bit. So, I'm going to cut it here. You guys don't need to hear me monologue on about uh, how fun how fun it is to drive around New York City. Most of you already know. Take exit 2 on the right toward Yonkers Avenue. Ah. Typical, uh... Typical New York drivers right there. All right, Beamer. Come on, Beamer. Get going. Oh, yeah, thanks for just putting your turn signal on or whatever right at the last second. Also, what you got to watch out for when you're making these turns, too, the hard turns in the city, Always watch the manhole covers and the drain and the drain drain covers. Make sure they're there, so when you put the trailer wheels over top of them, you ain't dropping them into a, an open drain or a giant hole, or you're not grabbing any sharp metal edges or anything, because you will blow you will blow trailer tires through driving through areas like this. Trying to make a mental note. Where, how you got in and enter and everything so you can get out the same way. Because if you start following the GPS out a different way, you know, you can find yourself also in a world of hurting. So just always try to, when you go into cities and stuff like this, and, and, and or I guess you want to call these urban areas, always try to go out the same way you came in if you can. It just makes life so much easier. All right, here we go. I think this is called Endicott Potato. I don't know why they're getting chicken. I'm guessing, I'm assuming they make other products that involve Tyson chicken, like uh, some kind of breakfast sandwiches or something. That's the only thing I can think of. So right now we're going to make a nice big turn, or we're not going to make a nice big turn. Come around here, and then I'm going to loop into the driveway right here, or attempt to. <laughs> I 
guy, I don't know why he was zooming around. Like, obviously, I, I'm maneuvering and going where I got to go. So that, that too, I, that really irritates me when, when people do that. Like, they think they see you trying to do what you're trying to do, and they, they I don't know, they, I guess they're afraid you're going to take 20 minutes. But sometimes you just gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. We're gonna we're gonna hop out here, and I'm gonna go in and hopefully hopefully I pick the right door. To be honest with you, <laughs> so let's let's find out. Well, the last uh, last I don't know four or five times I've been here, they've wanted me in door four. But today I back up the door four on my own, and uh, they want me in door three. So I had to move over to door three. So now uh, now we wait. We play the waiting game. Uh, it looks like, I don't know, I went in there today, went in there today, and there's nobody in the warehouse. There's like one guy. So, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if there's like a safety meter or something. But, um, yeah, there's nobody in there. So, this might be a little bit, at least until, until either they come out of a safety meeting or everyone decides to show up for work, one or the other. So, alright, so what I'm going to do is... I head in the back and I'm gonna probably start editing some of this video and uh, yeah we'll see where this goes fast in and out of here in 47 minutes so uh, we're unloaded we're gonna get the heck out of here and uh, I'm gonna head back to Pottsville that's what we're gonna do right now so we get the head now out through all the traffic that we came through to get in here that's what basically what's gonna happen I might even take uh, 287, depending on how bad it is, because I'm sure the GW Bridge going out the other way right now is horrific. So, let me, uh, let me pull out a dock here and get going. It's a typical uh, morning rush hour. The next light I gotta make a right at, which I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. If there's anybody uh, coming, sitting at that light, uh, coming up towards my right here, well, not, not this light, but the next light down, uh, that intersection is pretty big, but like I said, if there's anybody sitting at that light, especially if they're over the white line, there's no way for me to make the right here at this next, this next light. Oh, close your door. Thank you very much. Man, it took his time. All right, so now I got to make the right here, so I'm going to basically stay in this far left lane, and uh, hopefully the trailer blocks the majority of the right lane. Like I said, if anybody at this light here stops way above the white line there, I can't make the right here. So then I got to go down. There's an intersection down the next light. And, uh, you know, I think I might be all right here. Might be all right. Might be all right. Don't stop. Don't stop. Yeah, stop right there. Oh. All right. Well, I ain't making that turn, so. So I'm gonna swing this turn real wide here. And now I'm gonna basically do a giant circle. And I'm gonna make a left at this light. Well, eventually I'm gonna make a left at this light. So, only one kid getting on. So now I just gotta watch out for this old guy here on the left corner that's mumbling to himself and making crazy hand gestures. Oh, he's talking to himself. All right, so I just gotta make sure he don't decide to walk out into my trailer and get squished, which he didn't because, you know, it'll be my fault no matter what. And, uh, all right, yeah, we're, we're down through there. We're through this. All right, here's the uh, the bridge. It looks like it's a low bridge. And then there's this is where you got to remember which way you came. So usually if you're looking at the GPS, it looks like you got to make a left there all the way. No, you got to follow this road around. Because if you don't remember which way you came, uh, you'll end up on the wrong streets. Because uh, I already made that mistake once coming out of here. All I can say is the best thing you do is just always stay calm. The calmer you are, the better the better it is for you. Straight, the straighter you can think, I should say. You don't get all agitated jumping up and down and freaking out that's one thing you don't want to you don't want to do when you, you get into a city like this I have no idea what that red car is doing he's just gonna go through the red line I guess maybe he's a cop over here and he just wants to pull out I have no idea but... no, 
if I'm right, I want to stay in the center lane here. All right, yep, yeah, stay in the center lane. I'm going to take uh, the GW Bridge uh, basically back over to uh, New Jersey. So now 87 is a little backed up getting onto the GW Bridge. Well, not really the GW Bridge, but, well, yeah, getting onto the GW Bridge. But the, 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 the big problem, though, it, getting on to uh, from 87 to the GW Bridge going this way is that the on-ramp, the off-ramp literally comes right on, and then you go over a little bridge, and then you got the you got to get it all the way into your far left lane to get uh, onto the upper level of the GW Bridge. So that's that's really going to be the the fun part. Uh, I hate I hate coming off of 87 that way, but you'll see you'll see how much fun it is. So uh, we're gonna call it we're gonna call it right now. You guys will see me trying to weasel my way through traffic and try to merge my way over off of 87 onto uh, the uh, GW bridge here in a little bit. About 15 minutes of sitting in traffic there on uh, 87. We're finally going to get up on the Bronx, Bronx uh, Expressway. And uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully get over to GW Bridge nice and easy. Like I said, the biggest thing is once you get up on this ramp here and you come up, you come up right up against this bridge here and the uh, the, G, uh, the beginning of the GW Bridge. And you got to get over and you got to get over you got to get over to the upper level and let's see here let's see, I got to get over right now here all right yeah you got to get up over to the upper level and then squeeze your way over into the center lane basically into the far left or center lane because if you don't you're basically stuck uh, you'll be dead end basically dead end right there at the lower level. As you can see, this ramp it just keeps going and going. It's one giant circle. Wow, it's actually, <laughs> this is actually really nice. You get up here, you get up here middle of the day, lunchtime or whatnot, it is a pain in the ass to get over. Wow, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is great. I wish every day was like this. Uh, maybe, maybe not like the the other side. The other side, those guys are screwed. But uh, I'm smooth sailing here. It's all right. So I'm gonna get back to Pottsville here. Probably. Let's see. When am I gonna get back to Pottsville? I think like ten. Yep, yep. About ten thirty. I'll get back to Pottsville at ten thirty. So. Basically, you think about it, I kind of have like a half day going on for me, uh, except, you know, except my day started at two, like 2 a.m. in the morning, well, actually 1 a.m. in the morning, so uh, I'll be home to see my kids, get home from school and everything and have dinner, put the trash out for the trash man tomorrow, and uh, yeah, uh, today's going to actually be a pretty good day. You want to load it pace well? There's the load it pace well. I have no idea what it is. It looks like crucibles. Maybe for, uh, I don't know, maybe for like some sort of industrial application. For a second there, when I came up on it, I thought it was a, like a giant pontoon boat or something like that. But it, uh, I don't know. It sure appears to be super wide. That's for sure. Ah. How about it, guys? You guys clear up the head. I'm coming around you. All right, here I go. I always ask. If I don't think they're on 19, though. But I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to cause any problems for them. Like I said, he's really wide. He's probably about, 
geez, he's probably about 16 feet wide, maybe. <laughs> he's freaking really wide. He's got five feet, four feet hanging off on each side. He's got a pretty big load there. You saw how he had to get over and jump over when that car was on the side of the road. He had to jump right back over. You gotta have some good pilot car guys for a load like that. All right, well, we'll continue going down the road here. I might stop and get lunch. Um, man, I think Hickory Run. Hickory Run, there's a hole in the wall Indian restaurant, and uh, I might stop across the street there and walk over and get me some uh, chicken tikka masala. I think I said that right. Yeah, tikka, chicken tikka masala and some nam. So, I'll get back to you. And right there, guys, right there in front of us is why we can't have nice things. All right, so, I uh, I stopped to take lunch and uh, went in the back and uh, relaxed for a little bit, figured I'd take like a nap. And uh, next thing you know, I get a text from dispatch saying uh, they got a new load for me. It's uh, Long Island City for 1 a.m. in the morning. So what that meant was I had to basically take my, my 10 hour break right right now where I'm at. Uh, I'm in Whitehaven, I'm about maybe 25 miles from Pottsville, maybe 20 miles from where I live or 18 miles or something like that. Uh, but you know, I, I'm, I, I take the loads, I just take them. I don't refuse them. Um, you just gotta take what you gotta get right now. And this is a dedicated carrier, all right, guys? Um, that's, you know, that's like how things are going right now. Um, you don't hop on things when you get it, you're, you're, you're SOL. So, uh, you know, I said, yeah, I'll accept it and everything. And here it's a, it was a relay load. So I get a text a little while ago. It's what now four o'clock. I could have been, I could have been home now for like a good five hours, six hours now. But, but anyway, like I said, I get a text that the loads pushed out, I guess the relay load guy, the guy bringing the relay screwed up or something, I don't know. Um, so then they were frantically searching for another load for me. So now they gave me another load. It is a 7 a.m. delivery on Long Island, uh, Cisco, uh, out by, I don't know, I want to say, it's not Hicksville. Um, I, 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 it's on there, all right? I, I forgot exactly where it is already. Um, but yeah, so they gave me a 7 a.m. delivery. So now... I, I'm, I'm kind of agitated. All right, I'm a I'm little, little, little worked up right now. Um, so now it's what, like four o'clock, and I'm gonna have to, you know, to make that seven a.m. delivery, I'm gonna have to start my clock at two a.m. But the problem is, I'm already been sitting here now. I've already started my, my, uh, basically my ten hour break. So now, <laughs> I'm gonna be sitting like twenty miles from my house or fifteen miles from my house. And uh, I'm not going to get home because I got to sit out here now and finish up my break so I can pick up this load and make the 7 a.m. delivery over in Long Island. <sighs> oh, and on top of that, I ain't seen no eclipse. So that's what it looks like outside right now. There you go. All right. I'm going to go grab lunch. I'm not in lunch now. I'm going to go grab dinner over here. I want to go, like I said, get my, uh, I'm going to go grab, uh, what is it? Indian food over here. Uh, tikka, tikka masala. I'm going to grab some tikka masala, spicy probably tikka masala over here. And uh, I'm going to have dinner and uh, finish up my break. I'll probably take my eight-hour break, go home, finish up the two-hour break. And then um, then sometime around 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm at the Long Island. So, and this is why, this is why, guys, when I go do some of these videos, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm physically trained, all right? Like, like, literally, because I am, you know... When they give me these loads anymore, it's uh, you know one it's reefer loads, so we already know how that goes. But two, they're 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 putting them so close um, together, I guess you could say that the, the, the appointment times and everything that I, there's sometimes where I just have to pull over and bam, I gotta take my ten hour break right there wherever they just when when they hand me a load because I won't be able to make the load um, if I don't. So it's like. Uh, you know, I'm at the whim of the ELD. I'm at the whim of, uh, you know, Tyson dis uh, dispatching out these loads and everything. 
and uh, y you know, it's it's me on it's no fun anymore. All right, this is this is basically me just me putting up with this right now because to me, I don't know, it's just, it just feels like a safety net so far because I, I'm pretty much guaranteed loads for the most part. It ain't gonna be loads I want to do. Um, it's gonna be like apparently Long Island and everything from now on. Um, New York City and stuff like that. That's all I've been doing lately. Uh, once in a while, I'll, I'll get to stretch my legs, but that's usually over the weekend. If I don't work the weekend, I don't get to stretch my legs. I get stuck doing New York City every every day, just about here lately. So, um, I don't know. My summit last week, um, and when I mean last week, I mean prior because I'm paid, you know, a week behind. Uh, was like thirty eight hundred hours. Uh, this week's settlement's gonna be nothing because I didn't work all week, and. Uh, I don't know. I'm just, uh, you know, that that's not their fault or anything. I just had took off. I had to take off for a week. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm so tired. I'm just beat. I'm beat. And, you know, normally I want to put out better content than this. And, you know, I want to make the content where I'm talking professionally and guys can, like, kind of at least have, you know, I, I would say a little trust in what I'm saying. Instead of listening to me go, um, and try to think about what I'm saying all the time. Uh, but it's just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just worked, worked, you know, I just got to keep going. So, all right, well, I'm going to go in and get my, uh, my Indian food and, uh, we're going to, we're going to call it quits here. So if you enjoyed uh, the content here today, um, the lackluster content, please, uh, smash the subscribe button and go over there and, uh, punch the like button. Um, don't break your phones though. <laughs> and, and uh, jackknife out. All right.